distinguished guests and delegates, uh, dear colleagues and friends, and special, very special greeting to any woman and men rice farmer who present in this hall. I am deeply honored and delighted with the opportunity to have this keynote talk to all of you. So for me, rice is life. In my mother tongue, to eat rice means literally to eat. And this is true in many, so many different languages in Asia. In many countries, rice is used in special ceremony and in, in offering, in spiritual offering. When I learned to eat rice with chopstick, I was taught not to drop a single grain on the floor. Why so? Because my mother grand told me, rice is the pearl that the mother earth give up. This is a sin to waste even single grains. You have to share the, the rice. My grandma has gone to her next life, but that great spirit still live on with me and with a lot of other people. And as I continue working on behalf of Oxfam on rice and working with the rice farming community, I can't agree anymore with my grandmother that rice is of paramount importance that we have to treasure. And rice is a very important crop on earth, as you already heard over the last two days of Congress. Rice has larger social and environmental footprints on our planet than any crop. But I'm coming here today as Oxfam, and John has kindly introduced. And let me brief introduce to you who we are at Oxfam. And um, can I have the next slide, please? It's quite relevant because today is one day for eliminating poverty. And Oxfam is a global organization that has been working to end the injustice for poverty for many years. Okay. One person in three of us in the world still live in poverty, and Oxfam is determined to change the divisions in the world, and we do so by mobilizing the power of people against poverty. And you can see on the map that where Oxfam work around the world, over 90 countries, and we are confederations of 20 different affiliates across the South and the North. And around the globe, Oxfam moved to find practical, innovative ways for people to lift themselves out of poverty and to thrive. We work to save life and help review livelihood when crisis tried on them. And Oxfam is a, an organization driven by missions. And our mission is to tackle the root causes of poverty and create lasting solutions. So with that mission in mind, Oxfam has long worked with farming community around the world, and particularly with the marginalized, the disadvantaged, the women and men live in remote areas. Over the last decades, through many of the organization partners, Oxfam had worked to improve the rice bay livelihood for smallholder men and women farmer in some 20 countries. We work to build their adaptive capacity to cope with stress and shocks, including both economic and environmental one. Ladies and gentlemen, whichever way you look, there are multiple challenges, multiple sustainability challenges in the rice sector. Over the last decades, over the last two days of the Congress, I've been listened carefully. I have heard a lot of different ways to combat the sustainability challenges in the rice sector. I heard a lot about innovations, even inclusive innovations. I heard about technology. I heard about big data. I heard about the need to reimagine the rice sector I have, I have heard so many new things in the big conference, in the side event, in the small room, but I have heard much less about women empowerment. If we are not empowering women, 
we are not working to achieve an inclusive and human economy. And we have to remember half of the populations and half of the workforce in the rice sector are women. So yesterday, the CEO of the OLAM, Ms. Sunny Vegas, called for reimagining the rice sector. But how can we do that? Charting the new future, hopefully a better future for the rice sector, without talking about women rice farmer, without talking about empowering them within the sector. Madame Seno, advisor to the president of Uganda, called for building of small and medium enterprises. Think about agriculture and agribusiness. But how can we do that without addressing women economic empowerment? I don't believe we can't do it. How can we address yield gaps? Something close to the core of the heart of a lot of eerie scientists? We can't achieve or we can't close the yield gap without building capacity and empowering women and making them more secure, happier and healthier life because, ladies and gentlemen, women farmer, women rice producer and processor and trader, they are the majority of the rice sector. Well, I've been talking a lot about women empowerment and because I haven't heard much during the last two days, so let me define and explain to you what we mean women empowerment in Oxfam, so at least we know what we're talking about. So Oxfam recognized women empowerment as a multi-dimensional context-specific concept. Empowerment is defined as a process whereby women's and girl lives are transformed from a situation where they have limited power to a situation where they, their power is enhanced and increased. There are different ways for women empowerment to take place and the changes can happen at the personal level, within the household or within the community or at the national level. When you're talking about changes, certain changes at the legislative level, changing certain law and regulations to ensure that women and girls have opp opportunity to transform their life. Well, there are, that's the concept, but, but there's also tool and framework available to measure women empowerment in agriculture. Well, you probably already know that IFRI within the consultative group system has been working to co-develop the framework and tool uh, to measure women economic empowerment. But today I would like to talk about not just why women empowerment is so critical for sustainability of the rice sector and for the people who compose it. I also want to talk about some of the way in which that women empowerment can be achieved. So uh, I wish to cover three main points in my keynote today. First, I want to talk about the challenges that presently face women rice farmer and laborer Second, I will share with you some of the experiences from the field where Oxfam work or where partner Oxfam work, where the women and their group have tried to deal with these challenges. And third, I will conclude with some of the key takeaway for researcher and decision maker so that we can make the rice sector more humane as well more productive and more sustainable. So let me first talk about the challenges. Let us remind ourselves that there are many people who should be involved in these discussions but cannot be with us in this Congress for many reasons. Most of the people in the rice sector cannot afford to be here with us today. However, it is very important to bring the voices of women in our discussions as well as bring the voices of the one who marginalize, who are invisible within the rice sector, who are invisible in our discussions. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to watch this short clip and listen 
carefully to the women farmer who speak themselves on their everyday struggle to be a successful rice farmer. I also invite you to listen to some of the most concerned scientists and development worker in the rice sector. Um, can I have the video on, please? <laughs> ข้างกายก็เมื่อยเจ็บบางเพื่อก็เจ็บแอวนี่แห้งเจ็บแข้งเจ็บขาเจ็บแอวมันก็เมื่อยแล้วไปซ้ำหน้าเลยตื่นแ
เลี้ยงลูกแฟนก็ไปทํางานนอกบ้านรับจ้างทั่วไปบางคนเขาก็ไปนอกYou've seen how hard the woman farmer working and suffering. Can we ever taste the rice? Can ever be taste the same way to us? Who want to consume the food that is produced in such a way that's so unfair, unsustainable? The lives of the rice woman farmer doesn't have to be so miserable, so difficult, so burdensome. And we have to remember that the woman rice farmer, with their knowledge, with their skill, with their hard work, produce not only food and income for their family, but they also contribute to the global food stock. But the current research and development strategy tend to focus on improving rice productivity through new seed. And new agrochemical inputs. This production strategy take it for granted that there is always available of low-paid or unpaid female labor. New inputs and technologies, as you have seen in the video as well, are introduced all the time with little or very little or no consideration at all about the impact that they may have on women's time effort. On their well, on their health, and also on their well-being, the benefits and costs of rice production go well beyond farm and household level. This is a reality that Oxfam is incre increasingly aware, of, concerned with, and try to work and address that. So Oxfam commissioned a research. Many other have also seen that the rice sector is changing fast in Asia and Africa. And we, I have been told by some of the delegates in um, over the last two days that the situation in Latin America is also changing quite fast. However, small-scale farmer and especially the women are hardly benefit from these changes. There are widening inequality and structural problem for women in the rice sector that are invisible in the society. In invisible in research, invisible in policy, lot of the problem at the farm level could be addressed or readdressed, as you've seen and heard in various sessions over the last two days of the Congress. But there still remain very, very great constraints and inequality to be tackled, to be combated. Let's be reminded once again how large it is the role for the woman plays the rice farming in all the country in, in Asia. 
But we should keep in mind that 90% of the warm rice is produced and consumed in Asia. So in Indonesia, we have more than 70% of labor in upland rice productions is provided by women. In Bangladesh, similar situations, women contribute over 45% of the labor force. And all across Asia, much of their work often go unrecognized or not adequately paid, leaving women struggling to feed their family and struggling to gain a degree of economic independence. In Pakistan, in 2017, Oxfam research found out that more than eight out of 10 women workers and farmer growing rye was severely food insecure. Ladies and gentlemen, this was at the same time, these poor, hungry women produce food for others. We also, Oxfam also commissioned another research which show there are unacceptable exploitative relations within the value chains. We know that farmers can receive for the party they produce only around 10% or even less of the price that consumers are paying in the market for the rice they produce. That leaves the many of the producers with income significantly below the poverty line. There's also the issues around what and we also need to take into account the, the issue of feminization of agriculture and the graying of agriculture. These are another layer of burden and challenge to the sustainability of the rice sector. And, and when men leave uh, the farm, leave the village, and, and women do so too, but more men leaving the family, leaving the farming, more than women, and all of a sudden, the women stay back, and they have to take all the responsibility to take care of the family and also to take care of the farm. So for rice, they have to do both farm management and also labor management. In the opening days, the president of IFART uh, talked that we need to ensure nutrition, security, and to, to avoid hidden hunger. It's the result of the various kinds of nutrition. In many farms I have visited in my, in my work with Oxfam, I see that farmers, they produce a lot of different kinds of things. They not only grow rice, they also grow vegetables, spices, fruits. I mean, if these people are forced to move out of their farm and move to the city, there's very likely that they are going to suffer from lack of fresh and diversified source of nutrition. In the last two days, we also, I, or at least I, have heard repeatedly that climate change is making rice farming even more complicated and challenging. So poor women have fewer assets like land, economic capital, social network, which means they are less able to adapt when natural disasters happen, which are increasingly happen these days. And, and also women tend to be more, I mean, all these crises tend to be more devastating for women and their children and elderly dependent compared to male. So I talk about challenges already, I, I, ladies and gentlemen, I think you also want to hear about, okay, what are the solutions? What can we share with you the experience from the field? So at least we can address some of the challenges. The thing is that the experience in the field, in the, in the work that we and the partner organizations are doing, show that if we expect further progress in, in the rise productivity, in sustainability, it will not be achieved without enabling women to play a larger and more effective role. In reality, women have already been playing such roles. This is not something that they dream up, it's already observable, but it has a scale that needs to be supported so it can take more, taking wider scale and get more people benefited. For Oxfam, Women, our agent of change. Experience all that. Once we change the agencies, once the human and social capital is established, women and their group 
can lead the way in solving the problem in many kinds. It's either agroeconomic problem, it's economic problem, it's processing, storing, marketing, or utilizing rice. Let me share with you some experience for some, from some of the innovative effort in this regard that Oxfam has been involved with. First, I'd like to talk more about building women agencies through mobilizing resources and creating channels for communications and for collective actions. Um, it's come to the, the reality that rye production requires individual planting, effort, and labor. So when we're mobilizing the resources, um, it's really present the we really build on the capacity of the woman. And any innovations need to be introduced in the existing network and practices with corporations among other persons who are changing the method of production using new input, modifying schedule and so forth. So one of our successful experience in the model um, of the program called Saving for Change, well, it's not really related to RISE. It has some relevance to RISE, but it's, it's about building the women agencies. And we have this Saving for Change model in Cambodia, Senegal, and Mali. This is not like any conventional community finance scheme that you, you normally heard about. We don't, I mean, Oxfam doesn't interject any external funds the women save their own money um, and, and by doing so they build up their, their financing capital. So in 2003, the women, the poor and the resource constrained women in the saving group in Cambodia have mobilized over 3.5 million US dollar. In Mali, more than 700,000 women are organized in saving group. So we have seen from many evaluations that women, women can build up and use their own financial capital to gain a lot of power within the household and community and also within the broader society at the same time they expand their livelihood options. Our experience also shows that rural women can mobilize and handle money for improving the agriculture and household conditions through more rapidly and effectively if this is a part of a much larger organized effort. This group are involved in more than just financial transactions. They became channel for communications of new knowledge and for testing and in evaluating new ideas. Collective actions at the village level is very important for starting and for sustaining any improvements in technology, in introducing new methods of crop management, procuring, sharing input, and ensuring efficient harvests and post-harvest activities. So now let me talk about another important dimension of uh, empowering women. We need to talk about how it related to making services and technological improvement. So there's a lot of stereotype that things mechanical are main domain and that woman domain is physical labor and sometimes seen that just as manual skill. It has been interesting to observe that um, in many country or region, when mechanical mean of transplanting, waiting or harvesting been introduced, this task has been has become transfer to men, and these are welcome news for a lot of women. However, women increasingly take more, responsibility, take more responsibility for rice farming, and this makes it all more important that the desire of machines for planting, weeding, or harvesting need to be made more woman center. Actually, women should be the co-creator for this. Women need to be involved in the designs in testing of the machinery, and not just to do with the final testing. They need to have things through and innovate the machines in a way that women needs and capability are met in the way that this new machinery will be able to benefit the woman as well. So there have also been a presumption that extension services are technology are main domain, and only male can do 
extends and services, but our work in Cambodia show a different experience and challenge these assumptions. We have women-led agricultural service team in Cambodia. Since 2015, Oxfam and partner organization in, in Cambodia have piloting, working with these landless women and, and land poor women and gather them in group. They learn um, certain technique and they gather themselves, turn themselves in micro enterprises, offer the the whole package of farming, rice farming, to their counterpart, to their neighbor, to the villager next door, and, and they use mobile phone as a way of connecting with others and actually earn money from it. Um, and right now, this team has expanded their services to improve also vegetable, cropping, animal husbandry, and aquaculture. Since we are in the Rice Congress, I would like to stress that it's very important to remember the farmer need better farming system, not just better cropping system. And there are many synergies that can be achieved by making concurrent improvement in their farming operation beyond just rye production. We need to think outside the rye basket. And it's also economic decision, it's economic investment. Because women tend to be more active and effective more effective in sharing and in disseminating the new technologies. In the Oxfam work with the RISE program in Vietnam, we did the test. You know, after uh, training both women and men in Farmerfin school, we tracked them, and over the time, it's, we found out that one female graduate can or tend to introduce a new technology between five to seven other farmer, how about men? Anyone can give me a number? How many other farmer can they extend to? Or any guess? No guess. I guess you know. Only between one, two, three. So, another thing is about the way we, we continue to introduce technology and services is that there's so much cost incurred by continuing to take women for granted in effort to improve rye productions. We should pay attention to the health and mobility effect of current method for producing rice, you seen in the video. This very interesting and very useful experience from women farmer as a, adopting SI method in the state of Odisha in India, they found out that they suffer less pain and less toy associated with working in the rice field. Labor for women reduced by as much as 380 hours per acre, or as 47, 47 of eight hour days. They now have more time to eat and rest. And for them, for these women worker, this rice farmer in, in India, this labor saving in rice production set economic, social, and, and also cultural payoff. So now I want to talk about the experiences regarding the building the women agencies as the leadership for change. Women roles in making rice sector more productive and sustainable go beyond organizing production tasks, ensuring inputs and communicating new technologies and helping to improve that technology. A lot of things starting at the local level. But women are already play very active roles to communicate among villages with the local authority, with the local administrator. They also try to say the opportunity to speak about womanist, about their desire, their capability to government decision makers so they can change the decision that affect their lives. So the modern of saving for change show that women in this saving group have now become a real strong political voice and force. In Senegal, the candidate to the local elections include visiting this woman saving group during their campaign because they know that this woman saving group now very powerful. Similar to the experience of saving for change in Mali and Senegal, women have claimed leadership and Oxfam engagement with the system of rye intensification in other countries. And they also share that leaderships in 
within the community and also with the neighboring community. I realize that I've been talking um, quite a lot about the experiences, but ladies and gentlemen, this is my chance to share to you that there are existing experiences and good lessons that we can view on. We don't have to go too far away to think about something too dramatical. So I also want to share with you the picture of the four women in Vietnam. Uh, after they have started the SI method, they are so proud of it, they start using it as a way of encouraging other women farmer to start adopting, to start benefiting from it. Just another example of Miati Jana in East Java. She is really a, a great example of the woman leaderships. After she heard about SI and in learning, she actually tried to support other women farmers to learn like her as well. And she actually used her own resources to support them. We have another example of, um, of, of another great example from India where she's become the parliament member of, of her local district. So, well, there are so many, I mean, a lot of people like all the great example of women I show you here. But what does it mean for the implications for the research? So let me, so now I think you agree with me that there are type of some kind of science and practice increase inequity by being more appropriate and more accessible to those already when already rich, already well endowed resources. Other kind of science and practices, on the other hand, can move the rice sector toward greater gender parity as well as toward higher productivity and stability. We live in a, a world of data driven decision making, investor and especially government and bilateral organizations and increasingly they respond to the number. But there is little consistent and systematic investment in generating sex disaggregated data in agriculture. So instead of what we measure what we value, we value what we measure. There's understandable emphasis on measure empowerment in research because we can't measure this sex aggregated data, we measure something else. So we keep on trapping in this versus cycle. So we need to break the circle of this cycle of measuring the wrong data. We cannot reimagine the and beneficially transform the right sector without recognizing and valuing the people in it, both women and men who toil in the field. So while large-scale operations are growing, small-scale producers still play a very essential role for the, for the decades to come, both as the primary group affected by the current chain and also as the key agent to have the world tackle sustainability challenges. So we need the kind of science and practice that can move the right sector toward greater gender parity and greater productivity. Everybody needs to, to be part of solutions. Technology and science intended to improve rice production should be developed in a way that are supportive of women health and well-being while raising productivity and correcting inequality. I don't have a recipe for doing it yet, but I would like to leave with you four key ingredients. Yes, women need to be more visible and be co-creator in developing new equipment, new technology and adopting new practices. We must tackle social norms that negatively affect women. We need to fill the gaps in understanding of women's roles in rice supply system, looking specifically at women compensations, seeking to achieve equal pay for equal work, and lighten the burden of the unpaid work. The partnership with big data are the talk of the town these days. However, we need to stress that the big data will not necessarily result in technology that improve gender equity and that narrow the gender divide. There is need to include gender concern addressing things like women's time poverty, their land ownership, their access to mobile phone, 
expressly as for now are used as, as access point for data collections. At all levels, we need to combine effort in research, in development, academia, and governments to generate and use gender relevant data so that we can create a robust and comprehensive database that can provide credible evidence and inform objective policy making and decision making. Accountability and transparency is a very key ingredient. We need it in tracking and disclosing information regarding women farmer and worker. Rice company need to know who they work with in their supply chains. What are their working conditions? Are women and men paid equally, fairly? Research could help company to start adopting more appropriate policy and practices by informing them, by providing them this new evidence. Governments should incentivize company to help pursue this objective and keep them accountable. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to remember the woman that you have seen in the video, we have met in the video. They are, they are our food heroines. Let's value them. Let's build their capital so that we and the coming generations will have a new future of rice that is productive, sustainable, and humane. Thank you.